Why was Prince Philip abandoned by his family as a child? How did the prince's marriage to Elizabeth almost not happen? And how will the royal family honor his memory? Hi, I'm Joy and you're watching Ossa. Shortly after being discharged from hospital and returning to his family, Prince Philip passed away peacefully at Windsor Castle on the morning of the 9th of April at 99 years old, just 12 days before the Queen's 95th birthday. Let's look back on the Duke of Edinburgh's impressive 99 years of life a childhood defined by tragedy. Prince Philip may have been the longest-serving royal consort in British history, holding the position for 71 years. But before he met Queen Elizabeth, his life was a long string of tragedies. When he was born in 1921, Philip had four older sisters and was sixth in line to take over the Greek throne. However, when he was just a one-year-old and amid the Greco-Turkish War, Philip's uncle was forced to abdicate the throne, and his father was accused of treason. As a result, baby Philip's parents were banished from Greece and fled to Paris. Sadly, the family's problems simply followed them to their new address. Shortly after arriving in Paris, Philip's mother suffered an emotional breakdown. She was later institutionalized and under the treatment of Sigmund Freud himself was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. During this time, Philip's mother caused several scandals, including admitting that she was in an amorous relationship with God. Apart from the gossip and rumors this caused, it also resulted in Philip being motherless for the decade that she was receiving treatment. Surprisingly, this included five years of total silence in which he didn't see or hear from his mum between 1932 and 1937. It doesn't end there. Shockingly, while his mother was being treated, Philip's father relocated to another part of France with his mistress. Simultaneously, his elder sisters started to get married and move away to start their own families in Germany. At just 10 years old, the young future prince was an orphan in all but name. When asked about this period of his life, Philip admitted, It's simply what happened. The family broke up. My mother was ill, my sisters were married, my father was in the south of France. I just had to get on with it. Thankfully, the young man didn't have to survive on his own for too long, because his mother's family, the Mountbattens, agreed to foster him. Under their care, Philip was sent to three schools, the last of which was Gordonstown, an elite boarding school in Scotland. And it was there, when he was just 16, that Philip had to deal with yet another calamity. His sister Cecile, as well as her husband, two children, and unborn baby were killed in a horrific plane crash. Philip and Cecile were incredibly close, and after her sudden death, he took to carrying around a fragment of the plane as a keepsake. As if the death of his sister wasn't enough, this was the same time that rumors started circulating about Philip's ties to far-right Germans. The reason for this is that Philip's sisters had all married prominent German soldiers from the National Socialist Party. A few of Germany's high officials also attended Cecile's funeral and sent Philip their condolences. But life still wasn't done throwing shade at Philip. Just months after his sister's death, his uncle and guardian George Mountbatten died after a short fight with cancer. Added to that, Philip had to hear about his sister's accident and uncle's demise while at school from his headmaster. I don't know about you, but I can't think of a worse way for a teenager to have to hear such crushing news. Unfortunately, many of Philip's remaining family, including his three living sisters, stayed in Germany. This meant that his sisters were part of the enemy nation and caused a lot of scrutiny when Philip met Elizabeth. But more on that later on. Is all fair in love and war? After leaving school, Philip joined the Royal Navy in 1939 and started a successful naval career. In fact, after just three years, he became a first lieutenant at the record-breaking young age of just 21. And with the onset of the Second World War, he kept reaching new highs in his naval career. Within 10 years, the future Duke was promoted to commander. While Philip's time in the Navy was filled with stress and near-death experiences, there was a silver lining. During this time, he first met his future wife and future queen of England. The pair met at a family wedding in 1934, when he was 18 and she was 13. Five years later, they reconnected when Elizabeth's parents, the reigning monarchs, were undertaking a tour of the Naval College, along with the future queen and her sisters. After this second meeting, Philip and Elizabeth started writing to each other and were pen pal sweethearts throughout the war. When the war finally ended and Philip was allowed to return to Britain in 1946, he immediately arranged a meeting with King George VI to ask for permission to marry Elizabeth. 
Elizabeth. Despite the gossip and nastiness that followed Philip as a result of his sister's German connections, Elizabeth was absolutely smitten with Philip, and so the king accepted the proposal with one condition. He asked that the official announcement not be made until the following year, when the princess would turn 21. True to his word, Philip waited, and after becoming a British citizen, he and Elizabeth publicly announced their engagement in 1947. Sadly, not everyone was overjoyed by the announcement. The news was met with mixed feelings from the public. Even Elizabeth's family joined in, calling Philip ungentlemanly and accusing him of pursuing Elizabeth simply to get the royal goodies, whatever that means. In a documentary about the prince's life, it was revealed that the royal and political elite disliked Philip for his German connections, looked down on him for his lack of education, and questioned whether he would be faithful to Elizabeth. During their engagement, the couple continued to exchange letters. When these became available to the public years later, it was clear to see that he absolutely adored Elizabeth. In fact, one of his letters read, To have been spared in the war and seen victory, to have been given the chance to rest and to readjust myself, to have fallen in love completely and unreservedly, makes all one's personal and even the world's troubles seem small and petty. And in order to prove his love for her and to put an end to the gossip, Philip decided against inviting any of his German family to the wedding. Despite not having any family at his happy day, it seemed that for the first time in his life, Philip's story was finally evolving from a horror story to a fairy tale. The Road to Royal Life Five years after tying the knot in 1952, Elizabeth and Philip's relationship changed completely when George VI passed away, leaving Elizabeth as his heir. Suddenly, the couple was again thrust into the limelight, with Elizabeth as reigning monarch and Philip in need of a new title. Before the Queen's coronation, Philip's naval career was still in full swing, yet after she ascended the throne, he officially took the role of full-time consort. And, as we all know, with great power comes great responsibility. In addition to his naval career, Philip was responsible for his and Elizabeth's personal properties and gardens, as well as the education of his children. The prince was also the president of over 800 organizations and charities, while acting as chancellor for a number of universities. While Philip's career was undeniably busy before his retirement in 2017, his most important role was one that is often overlooked, being a loving husband. Lord Charteris, the queen's former secretary, explained that Prince Philip is the only man in the world who treats the queen simply as another human being. Strange as it may seem, I believe she values that. How sweet is that? Life Beyond the Castle before stepping down from his duties in 2017, Prince Philip described himself as the world's most experienced plaque unveiler, having given an astonishing 5,493 speeches and officiated a mind-blowing 22,191 solo engagements. However, his retirement is probably quite unlike what many of us imagine. Did you know that Philip wasn't allowed to reside at Buckingham Palace after he retired? It's royal protocol, and it meant that Philip and Elizabeth lived apart since 2017. And while this changed when the pandemic hit, with the couple isolating together at Windsor Castle, their reunion was short-lived. In February, Prince Philip was admitted to hospital. While the public was initially concerned that he'd contracted coronavirus, the palace denied these claims, reminding us that both he and the Queen had been vaccinated against the virus the month before. The truth is that Philip was admitted to hospital as a result of a heart condition. In 2011, the prince first started having problems with his heart and had surgery to insert a coronary stent. After a week in the care of doctors, things were looking up for the prince, but then he was suddenly transferred to a different hospital on the 1st of March. In explanation, Buckingham Palace released a statement that read, The Duke of Edinburgh was today transferred from King Edward VII's hospital to St. Bartholomew's Hospital, where doctors will continue to treat him for an infection, as well as undertake testing and observation for a pre-existing heart condition. But what was of greater importance than the move was the fact that Philip summoned Prince Charles for a meeting at his new hospital. It's unknown what was said during Charles's third 30-minute visit with his father, many suspect it was an emotional half-hour, as Charles left the hospital in tears, causing greater concern about Philip's condition. At the same time, Prince Harry, who recently moved to the USA with his wife and son, was advised to return to the UK to see his grandfather, whose health appeared to be in decline. What happens next? Long before Prince Philip passed away, a plan called Operation Fourth Bridge was put in place. This includes details about royal protocol to be followed after his passing, as well as Philip's requests for his funeral. 
According to the operation, after the press are notified, the country will enter a national mourning period, during which British flags will be lowered and newsreaders must wear black, while members of parliament wear black armbands. In addition, the Queen will enter an eight-day mourning period in which any state affairs will be paused. As for the funeral, Philip had previously admitted that he didn't want a large funeral, preferring a small military funeral to be held at St George's Chapel in Windsor Castle, before his body is buried at Frogmore Gardens. One thing that is evident is that despite his tragic past, Prince Philip lived his life to the best of his ability, and he will be sorely missed. Rest in peace, Duke of Edinburgh, and to the royal family, stay strong.